Hey everybody, I hope you're having a good day. So today we're going to be talking about microwave plasma, and I've been really interested in cold plasma for quite some time now, though I've never really had a microwave that I could use and possibly break while making this cold plasma. Though my luck recently changed when my family decided to purchase a new microwave and throw out the old one, which gave me one to break. So I decided I wanted to explore microwave plasma for myself. So let's check it out. So I started off with zinc pellets, which knocked over my Pyrex glass I was using, most likely because it's a smaller glass of only 150 ml, though for the time being it's the only glass available. Next I tried with tin foil, which worked for a second before I heard a giant crack, which was actually my microwave glass tray melting to my Pyrex glass in the spot a piece of foil was. So I had a few issues, one of them being that my camera wasn't able to get great view from outside the microwave, so naturally I drilled a hole into the back to get a better shot with my phone. I was a little worried it would ultimately mess with the camera sensor, though my phone still seems to work after all of this. Also, I was starting to crack a lot of glass, which I thought was a bigger problem than it actually was. Though I tried to fix it, this issue with a layer of modeling clay on the outside of the glass to hopefully stop it from heating so fast in these areas. I also tried this run with grapes, which ended up producing a small amount of sparks, followed by the grapes exploding, which resulted in putting themselves out. It also melted the clay instantly, so that wasn't a good idea, it turns out. Later I found out why, and I t started temping the glass as soon as I would pull it out of the microwave, and it came out to about 240 degrees. Strangely enough, some tests and it even caused sparks, though I thought this might be because I'm still using a rotating glass tray. A microwave works in the way that it has hot spots, which means that not all parts of the microwave are receiving the same energy. Though, this seemed to be fixed once I added some additional foil and moved the jar slightly off center. This gave me good insight as to where the hot spots were within the microwave. Whenever the sparks start, we know that there is a hot spot there, so I mapped out the hot spots and was able to get its sparks on every run after that. In this graphic, we are able to see the hot spots within the microwave. The yellow circles represent the spots that receive the most energy. So, after a few more attempts, I was able to pick the spot that I thought was best. Now that my cool plasma is more sustainable, we are able to better slow down the footage to see it in slow motion, though also to understand what's going on. As the material heats up, electrons are being thrown around at high speeds, bouncing into other electrons, creating the plasma. We are able to show the color graph of what is going on to see that the blue flashes are being caused by the aluminum and the yellow flashes are coming from the sodium within the glass itself, which is pretty cool in all aspects. This leads me to my final graphics, which explain more about why we are seeing the different colors within the cold plasma. It goes back to a very basic chemistry experiment that is still used in labs and within classrooms today, and that is the flame test. When atoms of a gas or vapor are excited, for instance by heating or applying an electrical field, their electrons are able to move from their ground state to higher energy levels. As they return to their ground state, following a clearly defined path according to quantum probabilities, they emit photons of very specific energy. This energy corresponds to particular wavelengths of light, and so produces particular colors of light. Each element, in some case, has a fingerprint in terms of its line emission spectrum, as illustrated by these examples. For example, copper produces a blue flame, lithium and strontium produce a red flame, calcium an orange flame, sodium a yellow flame, and barium a green flame. Aluminum is also going to be a blue flame. And so that's all the time we have for today. 
If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to like and subscribe. And until next time, have a great rest of your day.